Hello, everybody. I'm Ini from Knopf, and we are so delighted you've joined us today to celebrate Michelle Zauner's memoir, Crying in H Mart, with a very special guest, Mang Chi. Thank you to our retail partners now serving in Los Angeles and Book Larder in Seattle, two fantastic cookbook stores. You can purchase signed copies of Crying in H Mart from both stores, as well as Mang Chi's cookbooks. Links are in the chat. Thank you so much for supporting these wonderful independent bookstores. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone to toggle the chat down there with, um, from panelists, which is the default, to panelists and attendees. So you can all engage with one another in the chat and maybe even make some friends. And now for our guests, Michelle Zauner is a singer and guitarist who creates dreamy shoegaze inspired indie pop under the name Japanese Breakfast. She has won acclaim from major music outlets around the world for releases like Psycho Pump and Soft Sounds from Another Planet. Her latest album, Jubilee, is out in June. Crying in H Mart, her first book, is an unflinching, powerful memoir about growing up Korean American, losing her mother, and forging her own identity. Hello, Michelle. Hi. Mang Chi is the author of two best selling cookbooks, and she teaches a Korean cooking on her extremely popular YouTube channel and blog. And I personally love her content on TikTok. So over to you, Mang Chi and Michelle. Mm -hmm. hmm? So this is the right. Hi, Manji. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Congratulations. Thank you so much. How are you doing today? I'm so good. Yeah, I'm so good. And I'm happy, excited to meet you. This is my first Zoom. So many yes. people want to talk to me through Zoom, <laughs> but this is the first time. You know, I feel so, so lucky that you joined my Zoom. I, I know that it's, uh, I'm a very lucky person to, to have your, your first appearance on Zoom. I'm lucky too, because <laughs> you invited me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so now everybody's watching us now? I think everybody's watching us wow, now. I like to see all these guys' face. <laughs> <laughs> only our face, though. They're only in the chat box. <laughs> I think from the all around the world. Yeah, I think from yeah. all around the world. I mean, you have so many fans from all over the you world. Sure. And yeah. sure. <laughs> they're here to see, to see us make your apple sun drug. I'm so excited to make this recipe. I've never made this recipe before. This is so easy. And also, this is for you. And also, today, who is watching the Zoom, our talk, and this is like a really, really easy, simple and delicious and also healthy. So just uh, this is, you know, lettuce. Everybody loves lettuce, right? <laughs> healthy food. So we got to make this, we got to eat this and make some samjang, samjang and rice. You made white rice? I made white rice in yeah. my cuckoo also. Yeah, just as we plant, I made multigrain rice. So we can show that all this, our audience, right? <laughs> I so wish that I could be eating your multigrain rice instead yeah. though. It's so nice. I actually okay. remember I had no idea how to make uh, lavender rice until you, I watched your videos and learned that it's just, you add a little bit of black rice and it makes this beautiful lavender co color. Just the black rice. So if you add too much, the color is too dark, real black. But if we use just a little bit, color turned the lavender color. <laughs> really it's beautiful. very beautiful, yeah. yeah. I had it growing up my whole life, but I never knew how to make it until I watched your video. So, I think so many will, gifts to me. <laughs> you will learn so quickly because you were <laughs> raised by you know, your mom's Korean food. So just everything is easily approached to you. <laughs> so are you so, ready? I'm what? ready when you are. If, First, I like to talk with everybody. Hey, I cannot see you guys' face, but thank you for coming. So Michelle is, I love Michelle. She's just, you know, Korean daughter. <laughs> she is. <laughs> She's, uh, you know, raised by Korean moms, you know, the cooking. And after mom passed, she just, uh, you know, the, she kind of felt that everything lost about Korean. But uh, she learned the Korean cooking and then taste the food and the mom, she thinking about mom. So I really, I'm proud of her because she likes to connect all this culture. So I'm 
really, really honored to be here and honored to meet all of you guys. So that's it. So, mm. so thank you for coming and let's get started. So this is apple samjang. Usually samjang is very salty and I make samjang, but today's samjang is special. So I'm using apple instead of sugar. So nobody likes, uh, likes to add sugar these days. So I'm using very small apple. Did you prepare an apple, Michelle? I got it, a Fuji yeah. apple. Fuji, hey, me too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, so Fuji apple, <laughs> any kinds of apple good. But the reason I like a Fuji apple is very crispy, you know, crispy. And, but you can use also honey crispy, honey crispy, and also royal gala, you know, everything. So I'm going to use this small one. We need around one cup, you know, so like a, if you have, a, if your apple is too big, you gotta cut it in half. So I will use, this is small, I'm going to use. Let's just peel. 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 Yeah. Okay. I'm so jealous actually that you are so good at peeling with a big knife. Don't worry. But I, ha I have to use a peeler. Why, why tools are invented? So, <laughs> because people take advantage of this. But for me, just the tool oh, is so a, professional. No, <laughs> looking for tool takes more time for me. So mm. just using knife for all one knife, even today I have some, you know, this knife is for my fruit, but usually- Oh, special fruit knife. I just use my kitchen knife. <laughs> I know, I've seen it. I'm so impressed with your knife skills. Oh, yeah, I haven't peeled well. an apple anymore. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm so slow. Okay. <laughs> Even Our apples are ready. So we got to chop it up into small pieces. So yeah, you know that, eh? Slice like a thin meat, like this. Wow, David, it's so yeah. pro. Yeah. Be careful, finger. <laughs> well, my first cooking demo. Mm. When did you invent this dish, Mangchi? When I made my first cookbook. So oh. I wanted to make around it at the time in the summertime, I wanted to make something like a really some special one, but this Samjang is just okay. You know, even for myself, I wanted to make something healthy. So what about the apple, apple crispiness and crispiness and the apple sweetness. So it, it can be replaced, you know, for sugar. So I just made that and also doenjang. So fermented bean paste is very salty. So it's, it's going to dilute. And then one day I just do some experiment a couple of times, it turned out so good. I couldn't wait to release that uh, recipe. <laughs> so anyway, so we gotta chop it up into small pieces. Do you chop it like little square piece? Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. the cubes really tiny cubes. If this is too big, it's ugly. Plus also it's not going to, the cooking <laughs> is not coming to doenjang. So it mm. has to be really small. Are you using your homemade doenjang today? Yeah, yeah. Today I'm using my homemade doenjang. Oh, I'm so, so jealous. Sometimes, so you are living in Rio and then I can make you taste my doenjang. Ah, uh, yeah. I really yeah. want to try your doenjang. I so love your doenjang video because you use the electric blanket, like there's little brick baby. <laughs> in Korea, we use just well, the heated floor. Every family had the mm. heated floor. So naturally we could make no problem. Usually doenjang is made in the, during the winter time. Uh, but but uh, in New York City, I, I don't have, you know, the heated floor. So I use the electric mat. It works so perfectly. <laughs> yeah, it's so cute. They're like your little children. <laughs> yes, how long yes. how long has your denjang been fermenting? How old is one it? One year, one year. One year, one year one old baby. year fermentation after that smells so good, pungent, really good. Do you use it for denjang jjigae also? You use it for everything. Denjang jjigae, samjang, but I also buy store bought denjang because you know, when I make uh, develop the recipe, I cannot use my homemade doenjang. 
because a lot of you guys, you know, home, so you don't have a homemade doenjang. So that's why when I developed the recipe, I just have to use sobo doenjang. And but for myself, the homemade doenjang, amazing. You guys should so make. Good. You guys should make. Yeah, a lot of my that's readers my are these days making. They make. Because so, everyone has so much time right now. <laughs> okay, are you done? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll just, just ignore this. Chop piece. it up really, really the more. Okay. okay. Chop it up. Chop, 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 chop. Be careful, finger. Uh -oh. <laughs> You're so fast, Monty. I read that you know your book. In the book, you know your mom is a. Uh, you know when she was a. You know the, uh, when she was alive, like a, always, she was a, like a beauty focused. So yeah, when yeah. You're laughing. Kind of you give give just make a wrinkle, so she just uh, rubbing your face. And Did this, you grow oh, up like that also? I Did read this. That? Actually, that's uh, what I'm doing. That's <laughs> what I'm doing to my my uh, the daughter, right? Oh, you know, don't don't make wrinkle. Yeah, yeah. Frown. The frown is going to sit, you know. <laughs> but now that I'm in my early thirties, when I look in the mirror, I think, oh, maybe if I. If my mom didn't do that, I would have worse wrinkles on my forehead. So now I'm very glad that she she did that. You, you don't okay. have a, you don't have any wrinkle. <laughs> I do. Anyway, I do. here, so let's say add. Put it in bowl. Yeah, let's say add this here. I hope mine is small enough. Wow. Oh, yours looks so much smaller. <laughs> Mine will be chunky style. That's okay. Next time doing see oh <laughs> these are leftover things. Oh, oh this the is a sound bonus. went away. He's a bonus. You, is everyone? everyone else here? Yeah. yeah. So and here. Oh, hold on, Mom. See, can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh oh. Yeah, the sound went away. Oh, she, she can. Oh, we can still hear her. Oh, yeah. one second. I'm mm -hmm. having technical difficulties. Maybe we just turn. What do I do to get it on? Yes. Hold on one second. My mm -hmm. AirPod is clogged. <laughs> 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 Who's this? Who's this person? <laughs> Why is this? AirPod. So you guys are. Why you guys are fixing? Are you fixing now? Son, can you hear? Yeah, can you hear me? But yeah, I yeah. This, this, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Nice. Okay, okay. Ready? Okay, tech support. Thank you, IT man. <laughs> so, here, uh, first, let's do this uh, two garlic cloves and okay. two green onions. All I washed this and smash this and chop it up. Okay. Everybody, okay. I can hear you or just smash your sound. <laughs> so camera, can you put it the camera a little bit? So you guys are uh, now watching this, uh, watching our Zoom. So you guys are making this, you too. Just bring your chopping board and then make this. And let's eat together, just virtually. Hey, it's the perfect dish let's for the together. spring time. <laughs> oh, and then you chop the green onion in together. Yeah, yeah. Be careful. <laughs> Oh, so I feel sure. like I feel like you are just uh, uh, standing right next to me. <laughs> That's why I said be careful, just automatically. Oh, I wish we could. Get, I can't wait for us to get together again. Actually, Mangshi had me uh, for dinner at her at her apartment on my thirtieth birthday, and I had the most delicious bulgogi and her kimchi, and it was such a wonderful, special birthday. I will yeah. remember it forever. We had a great time. So you just, uh, okay, you're doing well, chopping. I will okay. just wash my hands quickly, okay? One second. Okay. <laughs> it will always be a little bit 
behind <laughs> Okay. So happy mine will just be a little bit of a chunky style. <laughs> so um, you guys at home, uh, are you following us? Just to look at this. This is, you know, the chopped um, apple and uh, apple garlic green onion. So chop it up really in small pieces. And mm, that sounds really good. All the, yeah, knife job is done. <laughs> so we are going to use all this, you know, salty stuff here. And let's add a doenjang quarter cup. This is my homemade doenjang. Oh, that looks so yeah. good. It looks I like just, a totally different color than my doenjang. <laughs> Mine is like really dark. <laughs> that doenjang is also good. Yeah, so good. So quarter cup, quarter cup. And gochujang, hot pepper paste, one tablespoon. What brand do you buy, Mangchi? I I like Sempyo. So Sempyo is a color is very red color, mm -hmm. but people you know it depends on people's choice. Sempyo. Yeah, some people like that more you know some kind of a pungent you know kind of even the color is a little darker, but. Uh, my choice is Hempio because uh, you remember my grocery shopping walk through the video and I just uh, I with my four five of my readers we went together Korean grocery shopping so that video is a four videos so, you know on YouTube now. Which and one did you go to? We went to the uh, not not H Mart. Hanam <laughs> 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 chain and New Jersey. So oh. we went there and. Just we tasted all kinds of stuff, you know, this and that, and uh, everybody is a different choice. But my choice is uh, this color. Color is very bright red, so sample, I like it. Mm -hmm. And then now salty stuff is here. And here's, uh, um, and then after that, the sesame oil, generously, one tablespoon. I love sesame okay, oil. Ready, ready, to, at the same time, ready, go. <laughs> okay, <table>. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and sesame seeds, toasted sesame seeds. One sesame seeds. Oh, generous. Yeah, one teaspoon. And then mix. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Sesame, sesame oil smells so good. So you just uh, mix oh. it. Just, yeah, gently mix this. And first, it's going to be very like a thick, but so oh my nice. gosh, it smells so nice. The apple apple sweetness is coming out. So, and also it's going to be thinner sooner or later. Wow. You must have felt so brilliant when you invented this. This is nothing. So when you think about this invention, they, oh, how can I say this is an invention, you know? But I nobody else made this, but I was- That's a, an invention. Okay. <laughs> What was the most difficult recipe that you've made for your book that took the longest time to create? Oh, a lot. <laughs> Sometimes really, really frustrating. I had to make it several times and it doesn't work. And sometimes work, especially like a measurement because of a measurement, you know, too many recipes I'm writing down and, you know, making. And then sometimes I get confused with my, oh, half a cup or one third cup. I just got confused and then I have to start all the way. And then by myself, I'm just blaming myself for too late, you know. <laughs> which one, do you remember which one is the most, takes the longest time, is like the most frustrating, difficult recipe? Uh, I think that there was uh, uh, some, what was it, talboche? This kind of Korean, Chinese Korean food and mm. it was a big platter. But I had to make that, you know, all the seafood was just uh, each one. I had to uh, make this separately, handle separately. It's one of the recipe, one of the ingredients is um, uh, the, what is it? The, you know, cucumber, you know, sea cucumber. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Korean, he sam. My mom really likes that, like that one. Yeah, and then dried one. So dried one is really, really dried. This. I had to soak this and boil, soak, boil, soak. It takes, it takes, <laughs> it takes a long time. Yeah, that sounds yeah. very difficult. That was like a challenging, you know. Look at that. So, oh, yeah. it looks so good. Yeah. Mine is maybe a little chunkier. You just keep, keep, you know, studying, it'll be good. Mine is very rustic style. I think. Contemporary oh. style. And the sound is really nice too. Yeah. So this way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We put that some nicely. Wow, it looks so good. I'm so excited to eat this. <laughs> Made this nice, eh? So you can sprinkle some more sesame seeds if you want. Let's see. Here you go. <laughs> and then are you ready? To <laughs> hey, wow, nice. So, you know, any vegetarians or vegans, they will love this recipe because we can eat with rice and all kinds of, you know, vegetables. So, you know, together you can wrap this. So we call, it, we call this sambap. Sambap mm -hmm. is a rice in wrapped in wrapped rice with the samjang. But today is apple samjang. Everybody, you guys should make it. You should make it. It's yeah. very easy and it looks delicious and healthy. Yeah. Bring Great. some rice, please. Okay. This I used my rice cooker. Get this. I also used my rice. Yeah. Show me your rice, please. <laughs> <laughs> this okay. is my rice. Okay. Yours looks so much better than mine. Mine's just white rice. Oh. You have a spoon? I have a spoon. I have a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I prepared so many vegetables because I wanted to look like a pro. Oh, can you show me? Yeah, these are. <laughs> Wow. An entire crudite of uh, weird things that maybe you, you what, don't what is it do. like a tomato? I, I have tomatoes, I have carrots, and mm. some cucumbers and radishes and yeah, yeah, bell yeah. peppers, but it's mostly just for appearances. That's you know, colorful, pretty. So you can also dipping sauce, you can use this as a dipping sauce. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. green chili pepper. I so this is from I live in a Mexican neighborhood or a, a Hispanic neighborhood, and so I I got this Mexican chili pepper, but it looks so much like a Korean chili pepper. I thought maybe it's this is a big one, big one. Yeah, yeah. So even Korean H Mart they sell. Mm -hmm. this, yeah, and that's my favorite. Even a lot of Korean immigrants they love that. Yeah, they yeah. Love that because the pepper is very thin. Thin and uh, very crispy. So, okay, everybody, you guys also, um, can you make this? The tab? Everybody, you guys just make this wrap, okay? Rice and samjang. This samjang is, you don't have to be, sting, you don't have to be very stingy because uh, we add a lot of apple. So you can add a lot. Not oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And then wrap. Yeah. And okay, eat. <laughs> Michelle, say yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's okay. Mmm, so good. Mmm. Wow. Mm. It's so good. It's so simple. Mm. And so many different flavors. It's a little bit spicy. 
a little bit salty, a little bit sweet. Mm -hmm. It's so delicious. I love it. You can eat this with anything. I think it would taste so good with like kalbi. Kalbi? Mm? Yeah, like some like mm. have lettuce, kalbi. Oh, I'm gonna make this all the time. It's so good. My new favorite recipe. That's version. good. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> no, I love all your recipes, Bob, too. When I make this apple samjang, I just uh, kind of, I'm ready to eat a lot of lettuce. Yeah. Lettuce and, you know, all vegetables. And then rice and wrapping and then just eat. And when I make a galbi, I just make a usual, normal, you know, the, the samjang. Normal samjang is just uh, instead of using apple, I use sugar or honey and then mixing. So I think this because, is so delicious. Because this is, you got to just uh, eat one seat uh, because it's, uh, the water is coming out sooner or later. Uh, so it doesn't look very delicious, you know? So mm -hmm. just uh, eat, That's fresh. finish eating, yeah? And uh, I don't want to, the, I, usually I don't want to, you know, the refrigerating. Mm -hmm. Samjang, normal samjang is you can refrigerate up to seven days. Yeah, yeah. Time you make it in just a seven day, no problem. Good to eat this one fresh. <laughs> I think that it's perfect if someone is um, making a, a garden for the summer. Mm -hmm. I can see you like on the patio with this one, with all the different vegetables you've grown, eating it fresh samjang with your fresh vegetables. I think that yeah, yeah. in the summertime, it sounds yeah. so nice. It's so delicious. I hope everybody who watch this and you guys make this, you guys, I hope that you like this recipe. I can't think of anyone who <laughs> wouldn't love this, this recipe. Some people who so love it. Right? I need the meat, I need the meat. <laughs> Goat <laughs> kind of people. Monkey, what happened? I need the meat. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, good for diversity. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for teaching me how to make this one. Oh, you are welcome. So <laughs> I had a great time. That's good. I think that I'm surprised. I feel like that you are right standing next to me. <laughs> I can see all of this. I can see investigating your rice and everything, you know. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, that's cool. I can do some cooking class like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your book is so well loved in my house. I have like kimchi stains like all over this cookbook. <laughs> I gotta show you a book. <laughs> but do you remember uh, maybe uh, when was the year that I met you? I think it was maybe 2015? Uh, 2015. 2015, I went. Mm -hmm. Do you, where was that um, Q&A with Huni Kim? That's a 90 seconds. 90 seconds. Yeah, Street. yeah. I, I went and saw Mang Chi yeah. uh, do a Q&A. And I remember because I had um, blonde hair. And oh. the girl who was doing my hair, she made a mistake. And so it was really damaged and uh, it actually was purple. <laughs> the I remember you were so pretty. So I thought, that, oh, Korean food makes her so pretty. You know? <laughs> my readers, whenever I meet on the street, they just recognize me. And then one common point is that everybody is good looking. So weird. Everybody. They want a good looking fan. Yeah. And is it sometimes... Uh, difficult to have so many people like who to feel so close to you is it strange did you expect so many people to feel like so close to you oh the, i'm so happy you know those guys uh think that you know i'm uh, like they're you know oh mangchi is my aunt you know <laughs> my mom you know just you know Mang -chi -mo. yeah you know aunt you know so you know they just when they see me and even I never met their face. I never met them, but they feel that I, they met me for years. Mm. So, mm. oh, oh Mangchi. And then I, same time, me too. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> because I know how they feel. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Michelle, I just, uh, today I read your book, you know, from the very first, it says for a man. <laughs> Amma is a mom, you know, so we call this a more like a adult word, Amani. But mm. Amma is a, all the time, Amma means that no matter how old you are, no matter who you are, you know, we all of us have Amma. It's a mom. So mm. when I read even from the 
first page, I felt so emotional. <laughs> so you said for Amma. Mm. So everybody who watch this, you guys also feel the same way, you know. <laughs> Our Amma is amazing. Our Amma is amazing, right? Yeah, mm. it's so cool. So that story is so funny. A lot of things that later when we meet, I can talk about this. Thank you. Michelle and Mongchi, thank you so much for that wonderful recipe demo. We have so many questions coming in and I want to try to make sure we get to as many as possible. And we actually have one that ties in so well, Mongchi, to what you were just saying. Um, Christina says, hi, Michelle and Mongchi, what's your favorite food that reminds you of your Uma? Mongchi, do you want to go first? That's my favorite food when? That reminds you of your Uma. Oh, my mom loves the, you know, the, uh, the raw fish, mm -hmm. raw fish you have. Mm -hmm. so, Whenever I I eat here, sometimes in you know, a sushi or when I whenever I make some kind of raw fishy things, I think about my mom. But my mom also feel the same way. So my mom said, you know, she's living in California, Los Angeles. So she's a you know more like a raw seafood, you know, some fresh food. And then whenever they eat, and they think about me. So mm -hmm. food is connecting us. Mm -hmm. So I think about my mom. Mom think about me. How about you? <laughs> I always think of jampong. My mom loved jampong. And every time uh, we went to the, you know, there were maybe only two Korean restaurants in the town where I grew up. And she would always order jampong before, you know, she never ate anything else. And she always asked for um, extra vegetables. And she just, she just loved jampong. It's like a seafood noodle, mm. spicy seafood noodle soup for people who might not know. Great. Yeah. That sounds delicious. Um, <laughs> Michelle, we have a we have a question for you. Joseph says, thank you so much for sharing your world to us with your book. What just wanted to ask how the writing process was. What parts did you wish you included but just could not? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I feel like towards the end, I just got so tired <laughs> of the book that, you know, there were certain things that I wanted to explore that just would, would have taken too long. But my mom used to have, uh, one of the funny things that I just, I really wanted to include, but maybe was not so important was that my mom used to have one best friend whose name was Young Soon. And she was a Korean adoptee. And I thought she was very funny because she had a German shepherd um, that she was obsessed with and, and they had very similar hair. She like dyed her hair like a German shepherd and she also tattooed her eyebrows, but wow. one of them was always kind of like quirked because it wasn't done very well. Um, but they got into a very small fight and my mom just cut her out of her life and was so stubborn about um, never like talking to this woman again over this very small fight. And later on, my aunt told me actually my harmony, my grandmother had the same exact thing with her friend. Oh. And my mom on her deathbed said to me, make sure Youngsun doesn't come to the funeral. And I told that story to my kunimo and she was like, you know, your grandmother said the exact same thing to me about her friend. And I just thought that sort of like generational stubbornness was really funny. I really wanted to include it. But uh, it, it was, I was at the, my wit's end with the book and, and it was just such a long process that I, I, I let it die. <laughs> mm -hmm. Noah asks, can you both speak about what the phrase son ma means to both of you? Mm -hmm. Son ma. Son ma. Son ma. Mm -hmm. Manju, do you, you must go ahead. Get <laughs> so that is like hand taste, like mm. the taste of a hand. And I guess it's kind of like, you know, you can make the exact same, you can follow the exact same recipe or like, you know, make something the exact same way, but there's, there's, there's always something missing. Like uh, the taste of someone's hand is just like this mysterious thing that handled it. And no two people will make the same thing, even with the same ingredients and the same uh, recipe. Kind of like, you know, in, in a lot of ways, what I'm chasing for in this book is, is remembering that my, my mom's honman, but I can never quite get there because, you know, even though we're similar, it's very different. What, what do you I, think? I think that the Americans on all around the world, the people are the same. 
you know, mm. somebody's apple pie is uh, some special, you know. So that kind of a somat, you know, so um, is a, you know, somat is a, that kind of meaning is in all around the world. Mm. But uh, we, when I was, uh, you know, the high school, we talk about somma with my friends. So high school alumni, my friends. So the one, one uh, girl was uh, so funny. She's uh, now just uh, Ohio now. And she used to say that, you know, somma, everybody somma, somma means that somma under your finger, some dirty, like a semi, <laughs> some solid stuff that yeah, that's what we need plus iPad, you know, <laughs> kind of we joking around. But uh, somma means as uh, Michelle says, just uh, so same food you made, kimchi, same kimchi you made. How come mangchi's kimchi is so tasty? <laughs> <laughs> I used to be called the mangchi, kimchi imo, kimchi imo. Mm -hmm. My friend, you know, some, she's living in LA, Los Angeles, and she has a, a children, the all adult children. And la last one, youngest one was when I met her, just a high school student at the time, decades ago. And she, I made some jeollado, Korean jeollado style, very spicy, you know, kimchi, and made this with the last of uh, the fish sauce. And she loved that. She said, oh, the kimchi imo, kimchi ant. So anyway, now on YouTube, my kimchi recipe video number one, right? <laughs> you know, view is like 10 million, you know? So I'm really, yeah, kimchi imo, kimchi imo is on YouTube. <laughs> So I think that the somman means that some certain food somebody makes very uh, better than other people. So oh, that somman, yeah. Mom's somman, you know. So everybody different, yeah. Mangchi, Jason says, as a vegan, I'm very grateful that you include vegan recipes in your cooking. Would you ever consider writing a full Korean vegan cookbook? Oh, the, you know, the I'm just thinking about, but actually. My all of my readers who are vegan, mm -hmm. they make veganize my things. Mm -hmm. Even the one day I met the, you know, he's living in Florida and he, he told me, Mangchi, I made your chicken just a vegan, vegan version. So I said, what? How did you make a vegan version? And he said, oh, I used the Dakkangjo. He, he used some um, the ginger and then ginger candy, make it like a mm -hmm. candied ginger. And plus he added some the you know the broccoli, the cauliflower, the white cauliflower. Oh yeah. I made this, you know, thing. So a lot of my readers are even the meat, they change it to you know veganize. And you know, I think they have no problem. once you get it, and also I have a vegetable stock recipe. My mm -hmm. second book has included vegetable stock. So because of the reason I made this is for vegan or vegetarian people. When you make a kimchi, I always use a fish sauce, fermented fish. But without this issue, I should make you know, some delicious kimchi. So that's why vegan style kimchi, you know, uh, they have to make a vegan vegetarian stock first. So that the kimchi is more like a kind of a savory taste. Yeah. But let me think about, you know, <laughs> writing cookbook is not easy. Oh, not easy, you know. So 2015, my uh, first book, 2019, second book. And just, uh, I think I have some arthritis after this. Mm. My fingers are every morning, just I cannot, you know, just bend easily. So I stiff, stiff hands. So I gotta relax a little bit. <laughs> a lot of hard work. Oh. Michelle, we have another question for you. Sita asks, when did you start writing Crying in H Mart and what inspired you to write it? Also, how did your friends and family feel about you writing a book? Mm, I started writing the book in 2015 and actually the first essay that I wrote that was published in Glamour was called Love, Loss and Kimchi. And I wrote it pretty much as just an ode to Manchi. It was about you know, I just thought it was a really cute story. It was like Korean Julie and Julia. And, you know, this woman who'd never met me, who had come to mean so much to me in such a difficult time in my life and really helped me. And so that was the sort of beginning of that process. And then after writing that piece and the response that it got, I, I felt like I realized there was so much more of a story there and so much unpacking left to do. And so 
Um, from 2016 to 2020, I, I pretty much have been working casually and not so casually on the book for, for about four, four or five years. Um, yeah. Wow, long time. <laughs> long time. Yeah, long time. Yeah. Michelle Riley says, I want to thank you so much. Your music and your words have gotten me through some rough times. As a fellow Korean American, I wanted to know how was it being in Korea for the first time as a child? I know you were born there, but you may have memories later on. Uh, as, as a child? How was it as a child? I mean, it was just delightful as a child. I think especially because I grew up in a small town uh, in Oregon, it was just so fun to get to visit a city and have a totally different experience because my family lives in Seoul. And also because, uh, you know, I come from a really small family and I'm an only child. I got to all of a sudden be around my two emos and my harmony and my cousin, and we were all in this tiny apartment together. And so I had such a joyful experience and I was so, you know, like catered to and coddled as a kid over there in this way that, you know, my mom sometimes didn't have the patience for when we were at home. So I just loved my, I got to go to Korea every other summer and I spent, you know, it was very much like a second home to me. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was such a privileged upbringing to get to, to do that every other year. And Aurora wants to know, Mangchi and Michelle, what are your, each of your favorite Korean dishes? Mangchi. I have so many favorite dish. So like, uh, you know, the Korean food, the good thing about Korean food is so many different varieties and seafood, meat, or well, even lots of vegetables, you know, and also soup, and stew, one bowl meal, so many. So that's why I, you know, sometimes I feel like, like, oh, bibimbap, and then I make bibimbap. And mm -hmm. then, okay, today's I'm going to eat the apple samjang with the lettuce. And tomorrow maybe, oh, I feel like some seafood. Okay, some mackerel, you know, salty mackerel pan fry. And all the time changing. So I, you know, I, I eat all kinds of food, right? So that's why, so, you know, the, I cannot say that which one is like my most favorite, but many people know about this, you know, because in the video I said, oh, eggplant, steamed eggplant, uh... kajinamul. So kajinamul is, this is my favorite. I said that and everybody remember this. Mangchi says kajinamul, her favorite, me too. You know, people are just, you know, they show it showing their uh, like a kajinamul photo, you know, some on their social, social media. So that's why, you know, uh, especially kajinamul and also I love that and all kinds of food, I love it. How about Michelle? <laughs> mine is, mine is gangjang gejang, I think. Oh. I really, really miss, I feel like I can't get good gangjang gejang with the soy sauce marinated crab, raw crab and the roe. I miss that taste so much and I feel like I can't get that taste anywhere um, but in Korea. Uh, I tried to make it, but I failed. I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> I have a recipe. I know, I followed the recipe. I think I'm, I'm confused something. And, and I, I also think that maybe the crab that I got was not very good, but um, I love that live. so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Live yeah. crab mm -hmm. and also that kanjang gejang is a kind of a challenge thing for me. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. people, are, people think strong. that when I kill the you know get uh, crabs, I had to put it in the, in the uh, freezer. Yeah. Uh, but real, my mom's way is that just the killing live one. So I told her. Aren't they moving? Oh, she knows how to handle this. It's just uh, under control. You know, the crab is just uh, like kind of under control. My mom. My mom is uh, like a small handful. And then the crab <laughs> cannot move at all. And then she just cut it up, pa, 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 you know? So Monty, make... Monty, do you like your Korean food more or your mom's Korean food? My, 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 <laughs> my own food. My, my kimchi is better, yeah. But Does she think so too? She, she handles much better than me, you know? So mm -hmm. it's helpful because we, we were living in the like a harbor city and my mm -hmm. father's job was also relating to, you know, seafood. So. I asked her, this is a funny story. I asked my mom before I made my ganjang gejang recipe, mom, I don't know, people are going to think I'm so cruel. I don't know how to, how to handle this, but some people keep asking me, requesting this recipe. Mm. My mom said, oh, don't show the, the killing scene there. So just, 
feel so much <laughs> and then you make it so my mom doesn't know what's going on this yeah yeah. yeah so funny and <laughs> does she like your food or does she I think she makes like better she food? loves my food she loves my food even these days she called me hey how do you make the machine oh wow real reversal yeah she asked me because when you get older you just uh, forget you know so mm. when you forget you know what was it you know so even myself and i have been doing 14 years so 14 years ago i made the first recipe the video is blurry but recipe by itself is so good so sometimes i visit there okay well how i made this and then i'm just learning by myself <laughs> so never forget never forget because this is my kind of you know all my life history mm -hmm. this recipe on youtube is that just all my story and any authentic korean dishes just provided so everybody can learn yeah even after i die yeah <laughs> <laughs> i hope so <laughs> you'll live forever in your videos <laughs> Lily says, thank you to both Michelle and Mongchi for an amazing recipe demo. I wanted to ask Michelle, how was the writing process for Crying in H Mart similar to or different from the writing process for Psychopomp? Mm, I think that for writing Psychopomp, it was like such a private, immediate thing. You know, I feel like it just came out really quickly in a way and it was um, more playful and also haphazard and I think that writing songs is has like a sort of impressionistic quality and it's nice because there's a lot less words and you can kind of just write freely and in, in fragments and uh you can't really do that with a book and and it takes a lot more work and time and uh revision and sort of uh, a more like brainy analytical part of you but um I learned so much in the process of writing this book. And I think also part of it is I, I just, I've written a lot more records and songs. And so I feel more comfortable with that. And now that I've written this book, I feel able to take on writing another one in, in a way that maybe I'd have more strength and courage uh, in taking on. But I've definitely never felt uh, as stupid as I have uh, in writing a book. <laughs> we have an anonymous question. They want to know if there are plans to translate your book in Korean. They say, I also grew up with a Korean mom and have limited Korean proficiency. I would love to share your book with my mom. Mm, yeah, actually, uh, there is going to be Korean translation. And I, I realized I didn't answer the question earlier, but, you know, my my uh, I don't have much family left. And I have like so, some of my family have read it. I, I think my dad's read it. And, um, you know, my aunt doesn't speak English at all. And so. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous and also very excited for her to get to read the Korean translation. There's a Korean publisher called Munhak Dongne, and um, they are, I think it, the translation takes about a year. So I think that maybe next year there, there will be a Korean translation. And I, I can't wait to see it. Also, I have noticed that like Korean book covers are so different than uh, American book covers. So I'm really curious like what the different styles will be. Like it's very, uh, they're a little bit more like, um, like soft looking and like more like um, like there's more cartoons and stuff uh so i'm excited to see like how they do the do the cover i'm sure it'll be a big hit i hope so for yeah, <laughs> very last of a lot of interesting stories mm -hmm. Alyssa says as a korean adoptee raised by a single white mom i'm learning a lot about korean culture through your book do you know what your next writing project will be? Do you write fiction too? Yeah, I studied fiction writing in college and I always thought that I might write fiction. Um, maybe someday I don't really, you know, I might just do one of those things where I kind of take parts of my life and, and turn it into fiction and, and hide behind that after, you know, we'll see what the response to this book is and, and whether or not I flee in that direction. But um, I think a very natural jumping off point um, from this book is, is my interest in Korean language as a, as a new sort of thing to tackle. And I'd love to move to Korea for a year and, and document my process learning the language because I feel like if I never make it into a project, it might not happen. And my mom always used to say to me, you know, like, you know how to read and write, you, your pronunciation is pretty good. Like, um, I think if you just lived in Korea for six months to a year, you would become fluent. And so I, I would love to, to test out that theory and, and, and document the, that process. And also, I think after writing Crime in H-Mart and, and so much of it is about 
uh, writing about memory. I, I really long to just write something and that's sort of happening in real time because I think it, it would be a lot easier. <laughs> Julianne wants to know if either of you like to listen to music while you cook, and if so, what do you listen to? Mm -hmm. Auntie, do you what? Do you have some favorite musical artists that you listen to when you are cooking? It is you. <laughs> <laughs> and also, the I just uh, you know the uh, I kind of sometimes I focus on my cooking or whatever, and then I'm quiet. Mm. I like to be quiet. Yeah. Mangji, do you know the artist Shin Jung Hyung? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh. So actually, in my book, we talk about Shin Jung Hyung yeah. uh, at the end. Mm. And do you know uh, the Pearl Sisters? Pearl Sisters? Yeah, yeah, of course. Kopi Han Jan. Kopi Han Jan. Yeah. So in the end of my book, yeah, she can go. I think so, you should make that song. Yeah, actually, I have a cover of that song. I'll send it to you, but. Yeah. Uh, my yes, mom I, and my my emo they my emo told me that at Norebang they used to sing Kopi mm -hmm. Han Jan together. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, "Oh, you need at the end of my big this is a spoiler alert, but that song is very important for the end of my book. So I was wondering if you listen to that band. Oh, I love that Shin Jung Hyun music. Yeah, music so cool. Do cool. you know Do you know um Kim Jung Mi? Kim Jung Mi. Kim Jung Mi. Oh, she what is it, one what? of his singers. She wrote the song called. He wrote the song called "Hennim" for her. That's so beautiful. I'll, I'll have oh, to send it to you. Maybe a recent singer. So yeah, maybe I more more recent. Yeah. All the ages. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't follow this. But Pearl Sisters. The Pearl Sisters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's cool. If you make it, so it'll be really popular. I think. Yeah. <laughs> In America. Yeah. I'm nervous about my pronunciation. <laughs> oh, you did a good job, and I saw, I saw that a lot of Korean languages in your book. Yeah, yeah. Masisoyo, you know something like that. Masisoyo, drink. We have so another anonymous. I mean, you always uh, spoke Korean. Hmm? In my house. Yeah, your mom when she was alive, you always you guys uh, spoke in Korean. You know, we didn't speak in Korean much because she was very nervous. I think that my dad would feel excluded. So we, we spoke a little bit. Sometimes she would, we, we had like, if I was misbehaving, we had like a danger word in yeah. with the Korean word of like, yum, you know, yum. what is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. she would Dangerous. say, when, when I was like really getting um, close mm. to the edge of, you know, yeah. in trouble, she would say, Tankong. And I knew if she said Tangkong that I was in trouble. Mm. Kina oh. was our code word of like, you know, you're about to get it uh, if we were in a public. And I no think she there. made her own word. Yeah, she made <laughs> <laughs> We have another um, anonymous question. Can you both explain a little bit more about what Korean food has meant to you in terms of connection and relationships across generations or cultures? Oh, serious question. Yeah, Korean uh, food is uh, just, you know, uh, very, like, easily you can share together. So, like, uh, for example, some soup, you know, when I make a radish, you know, beef radish soup, and we make a lot of, and then, like, uh, you feed 10 or 20 people together. And so that's a kind of a communal, like, uh, really, really easily we can make this. And the relationship is, a. Um, um, the, through the, this kind of food, the, for example, for me, I make some Korean bibimguksu. Bibimguksu is a spicy mixed noodles. Mm -hmm. My aunt, she, uh, she passed maybe five years ago and she uh, in Korea. And then the, uh, when, when I lived in Korea, I just visited her house with all my family, my mom, sisters, and to her house. She had her own children, maybe 10 children. So we are, we are like so many people in one small room. She is never rich, kind of a poor, you know, among our aunts. And she, on that day, she had to feed lunch, all of us. And she just made the, the noodles. So noodles, for, uh, she uh, cooked the noodle a lot, you know, so the noodles, and then cold the, uh, you know, rinse in cold water, make it chewy, 
and then chopped the kimchi and Korean gochujang and the sesame oil, a little bit sugar. And then she used her bare hand and then mix it, you know, like a kind of a large, like a basin. And noodles, the kimchi, hot pepper paste, and the sesame oil, and sugar, and sesame seeds. And, and then she just uh, using her hand. That was really impressive for me. Mm -hmm. And I tasted this amazing. So I'm, I'm kind of a person like uh, some delicious, really beautiful decoration. That's the kind of, a, oh, it's kind of, a, you know, food is okay. That's okay food. Mm -hmm. But something like my aunt, late aunt food, never forget. Even yesterday I made that, you know, this bibimguksu all the time. Once a week, uh, at least I make this uh, bibimguksu. Every time I make, I just, uh, there, I remember the scene, my, and you know, made using bare hand and then whole using you know, hands and then just all shared together. So what I did was 2011, I went to Kapsida trip, you know, so Europe, I traveled to Europe and there was, I think the uh, Netherlands. So Netherlands, one of my, you know, reader's house, I went there and there was like 50, 60 people came to her house. Wow. To, that's our middle. So, I was thinking about, okay, just like my aunt, Iji, and then I, we made that lot of bibimguksu, and then just even just like my, uh, my aunt did it, I did it. All people, you know, some small cute cup, and then, you know, some, I gave it to them, and everybody enjoyed this. So this is uh, all the, you know, the, uh, any food is just uh, my life. Food is my life, and all, oh, you know, I can remember, and then this is my life. Yeah, my life history. Yeah. Mm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I feel like I never really questioned my Korean identity. It always felt like a very natural part of who I was. And it wasn't until my mom passed away that all of a sudden I felt this threat that maybe if she's gone, does her family even belong to me? Does, does this culture even belong to me? And so I feel like so much of writing this book was proving to myself that I have to work at it now. Uh, I have to more actively engage in that part of my culture in order to preserve it. And it's also become a really important sort of private ritual for myself every day to take, you know, 30 minutes or an hour making something. Uh, and it's like a, it's like a ritual of, of I, I, I'm making something, but in my mind, I'm thinking of my mother, I'm thinking about the dishes that we used to eat when I was a kid and, and I'm sort of preserving her memory uh, by, by putting work into something um, that reminds me of her. And, and that's what food has come to mean to me. That connection is so important. Well, we're just about at time. So thank you so much to both of you for such a beautiful cooking and celebration together tonight. Um, thank you everyone for joining us and for all of your amazing questions. We got to as many as we could. Um, and please remember to buy Michelle's book and Manchu's cookbooks from our from our wonderful bookstore partners. Thank you, well. That's great. Thank, thank you, you so much, Manchi. I know that you rarely do this. And so I really, really appreciate you making the time and exception for me. It means so much to me in my life. You know that already. And thank yeah. you very much for now of serving. Course. Thank you for inviting me, Michelle. Congratulations again. And then people who watch us, just uh, okay. Happy cooking, everybody. Thank you for coming. Happy cooking, everybody. <laughs>